This is Doug Barberg and welcome back to another set of tips and tricks. And today we're going to talk about is a product from Transducer Shield and Saver. It's a RAM mounting base. And what this allows us to do is a poly material. And one of the things that comes with all the bases and the and when you buy your RAM mounts or your base from Transducer Shield is you get the hardware also to attach it to the boat. So you're not going to have to go out and hunt for the right screws. Uh, when you do this. But what this RAM base does is it mounts underneath here. It's got a notch to allow the cables to come out. And one of the things that you run into is consoles are not are not level here. So the easiest way to figure it out is to put some masking tape on the unit on your console here and, and try to find the best location and rock it back and forth. You see there we got a lot of rock so that wouldn't be a good place. Down in here, the other thing is is to fill up underneath here. On this boat, there's a brace that runs right here, so that's not a very good location. But just take it around and rock it until you find the location. And right there is a pretty good location. Once you find it, like we found about right here, is to mark it. What I want to do is mark the masking tape we laid down around our ram base. And now, if I remove it, I had, know exactly where it is. But the first thing we should have done was mark our holes here. Uh, ram bases come with four holes. Um, I recommend using the three is plenty enough. Um, use your bolt package with your washers and your nylock and lock nuts underneath. Uh, I'm going to just double check. There's nothing underneath there that's going to obstruct us uh, when we drill through. We're not going to drill through a gauge or a hose or, or wiring harnesses down there. So, And you can mark your holes. So now you have your, your masking tape on here. You know exactly where your RAM base is going to go, so we can mark this. Now one of the things I suggest uh, in your drill, cord, I like to use a cordless drill, because cordless drills feature one thing, is the ability to run it in reverse or forward. Uh, with this, if you run it in reverse, you can drill through the gel coat first, then come, once you get through the gel coat by running in reverse, it will not crack or chip, chip your paint. So, run it in reverse, once you get through the gel coat, then fire it up. Next thing to do is figure out where we want our cables to come out. And with the transducer mounting base, you have a center hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that center hole as our pilot to drill our hole that we're going to use our cutoff saw to bring our cables up and through. Let's set our three screws in here. We've got our holes drilled. And what we're going to do is make sure there's nothing underneath there, which there shouldn't be because we already checked when we did that. But it's always good to double check before you start drilling big holes. Um, next what I use is a hole saw. Basically you have different size hole saws. Uh, figure out the size of hole to bring your cables up and through. This one, and this has a drill bit in the middle with a cutting hole, hole cut saw on the outside. Let's uh, give her a whirl. What you want to do is go backwards first.
and you can slowly go forward. And before you pull it out, grab that vacuum sweeper. Turn it on. sweeper on you get that dust out before you go through here uh, you got the nice big perfect hole the next thing we need to do is run our cables up and we'll run them and then we'll uh, get to putting this down okay the next thing once we get our cables all run through is one thing I like to use is this this rod sleeve material uh, I get this through TNH Marine uh, you can you can acquire it at a lot of different places, but this really helps makes your cables a lot easier to manage and keeps them makes your install looks a lot more professional. The thing is, is what I like to do is make sure all my cables are pretty close to the same length because you're going to want them to come up and go into your graph here. Um, this is my Ethernet, so. What I've done is when you do this stuff, you need to take a torch and, or a little match and, and heat it up. I've cut a little notch in this side for my Ethernet cable to come out of because it's going to be a little shorter and going to go to a different place than the rest of my cable clutch. So I like to run it first. The next thing you want to look is at your cable collector. And you're going to have a notch on one side, and that notch is going to... Uh, be either this where the screws are up or down these are going to point out at you so what you got to do is think about putting that in I want to put this one and this one on this on the right hand side and the other cable on the right hand side if you look at these they're all indexed differently this is my got my ASSI DBY cable that what I've got one side is going to be my side imaging and the other side is going to be my 2D transducer it's going to go down the bottom left so we're going to run it in. My other cable, this side is clipped, this side is not. So this notch side is going to be my GPS, which will say NEMACOM on it. We're going to kind of run it on the same side with our transducer cable. And then our last one is going to be our power cable. Now I'm going to kind of run it on the side with the, the Ethernet cable. It would make it a lot easier when you go to plug these in if they're kind of on the side that you're, you're dealing with. And there's all of our cables. So the next thing to do is to run them through this base. And then the base, you're going to see the side with the power cable is going to have a little extra notch to it. You do not run the Ethernet cable. You run the rest of the cables in there. You're going to run this up. Into the housing a little bit. And that will hold it. Or you can put a little zip tie or tape it just a hair. And then the next step is to install them. There's, and you want to make sure these go in good and straight. Because that will save you a lot of problems. If you get a transducer disconnect or something, it could be because this is cocked in there at a little bit of an angle and it's not seeing it. Push on your material when you do it up. And look up here. And if you can see, this one is cocked a little bit. So you want to kind of get behind it and get it good and straight in there. Make sure they're seated real nice into the base, and then put the two little screws in to hold it. Kind of want to make sure everything is good and fixed there. 
before I put our base plate on because when we put our base plate on we're going to have all that stuff coming out it's going to come up and attach like that so the next thing step is to take our base plate with our notch in our direction and mount our bolts accordingly but first thing we want to do is get rid of old Mr. Masking tape. Get back to a shiny, pretty gel coat. Take our big screwdriver, and, and if your holes are a little tight, they're going to be. We'll just screw them down a little bit. I wouldn't get tighten one down real quick and too tight. Kind of want to take them down even. Before we tighten it down, I'm going to put a little drop of blue Loctite, even though I'm using Nylox and these big fender washers, plate washers, uh, we're going to put just a little drop of this. This will help keep those threads from ever wanting to loosen. Uh, I'm going to crawl in underneath and uh, see what we can get done here. Okay, what you'll need is you'll need a 7 16 inch box end wrench. Uh, use your electric screwdriver. Make sure it's in low. And just give it a little snug, extra snug after you run it down with the driver. And that puts it on their rock solid that sucker ain't gonna move uh, put our take our 1198 set it on there hook our cables up Crank her down. That sucker ain't going anywhere. Good, good protection for your boat. I hope that helped you uh, learn a little bit about putting the transducer shield and saver base plate on. Uh, check them out. I mean, you get the screws. If you buy a ram mount from them, you get the hardware for this. For the mount of graph. Uh, a complete package. You're not making an extra trip to town when you buy your products from Transducer Shield and Saver.